uh, let's start over. Uh, now, we're, uh, today we're discussing uh, Z-Way controller integration and a uh, API. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, we had an introduction in uh, Z-Way home automation and basic um, usage. We discussed how to use the UI, how to use the controller, how to make basic automation. Uh, a week ago, we had a very advanced topic about Z-Wave um, uh, specific questions of Z-Wave. And uh, we discussed how to use the expert UI, uh, how to understand the Z-Wave standard, how to configure Z-Wave devices, and how to diagnose problems. And uh, that was all about the Z-Wave protocol uh, in Z-Way. Today, we will discuss various API available in Z-Way controller. Especially, we will discuss the Z-Way HTTP API, how to integrate it with third-party uh, systems, uh, we will discuss advanced scripting, uh, how to send sensors, sensor values to different uh, HTTP systems, and uh, how to use JavaScript API to make your own home automation and even uh, make your own apps that you can easily download uh, through Z-Way App Store. Um, let's start with... Uh, where to get more information. Uh, of course, there is a very big Z-Way manual which is available online, and there you can get all the information about Z-Way systems, uh, especially about the home automation subsystem, uh, various API, how to use them, uh, how to do uh, scripting. Uh, there is also um, a GitHub uh, repository of uh, Z-Wave Me, where you can find the home automation engine, which is open sourced, and uh, smart home and expert user interfaces. So basically, after this slide, uh, we can stop the webinar because you can find every th everything there. But um, I will try to discuss in more details um, how to use different Z-Way uh, APIs in this webinar and hope that it will help you to understand the manual and um, uh, do things faster using Z-Way. So first of all, let's discuss uh, Z-Way building blocks. Uh, Z-Way uh, has several parts and uh, one part is the home automation engine, which is written in JavaScript. Uh, this uh, home automation engine uh, is open sourced. You have seen the GitHub uh, repository above. Uh, the second layer, which is uh, below the home automation engine, is the JavaScript uh, engine itself. It's based on Google V8, the famous Google uh, JavaScript uh, uh, parser, which is uh, the basis of, uh, for example, Google Chrome, some other browsers and, uh, for example, uh, it's also used in a mobile phone for uh, for browsing. The engine itself is written in C++ and uh, uh, we use the same C++ language to make bending between um, this Google V8 engine and other, um, other subsystems of Z-Way. Uh, this engine uh, is executing the JavaScript code that we uh, written, and additionally, it can execute the JavaScript code that uh, uh, you can write yourself. Uh, additionally, it acts as a glue for all other modules written in C++ by us, uh, and those modules are so-called JavaScript add-ons, uh, implementing various functions that are not part of the standard JavaScript. Uh, one of the main part of our controller, the main module, is the Z-Wave module. Uh, it is based on the Z-Wave C library because um, the Z-Wave part of uh, our system can, uh, it's a separate library and can be used dedicated. 
dedicated in your projects. But here it's uh, uh, used to make the Z-Wave part of the JavaScript. Additionally, there is uh, a web server, which is also implemented um, uh, in C and C++, and uh, uh, it shows up in JavaScript, so you can run your own web server uh, using this simple JavaScript uh, language. Uh, and there are other various modules that are used to make your home automation. Uh, HTTP client, so you can make HTTP and HTTPS requests. TCP and UDP sockets, so you can make uh, pretty easily connections to different uh, pretty low level systems that requires TCP connections. Uh, Web sockets, if you want to connect to a pretty modern server that uh, allows you to keep a constant connection. Uh, Web sockets are uh, very cool for instant uh, uh, instantly pushing data to uh, third-party systems. Additionally, there are a few models for cryptography, timers, file system storage, and XML parser. Uh, if we uh, draw the Z-Way building blocks, it will be something like this. So here on the left, you have different clients. Uh, a client is a web user interface, for example, a mobile app uh, or some other HTTP integration. Uh, then the HTTP connection is used to connect to the Z-Way engine itself. And um, here the main block is the JavaScript engine. Uh, and inside there is a JavaScript home automation engine. And uh, inside that engine, there are different uh, different subsystems and different uh, objects like VDEF. VDEF is uh, acronym for virtual device. We'll discuss it a little bit later. Apps, those are Z-Way apps that you can install in uh, uh, apps um, tab in the smart home UI. And then on the right, you have different connectors to this JavaScript engine. Um, those that we discussed previously, Z-Way, Notion, uh, HomeKit connectors. Additionally, you have uh, HTTP, TCP, WebSockets, all of the all the stuff we discussed previously. Uh, and the the uh, Z-Way uh, library is using USB and UART to connect to the hardware. Uh, in uh, the hardware is Raspberry or USB dongle. And uh, that hardware will then be used to access the Z-Wave network itself. So this is a pretty uh, basic picture how uh, Z-Wave looks like from uh, uh, and how the building blocks are connected to each other. If you want to use Z-Wave in your project, you can use Z-Wave as a complete solution. That means you will use everything uh, drawn on the picture uh, on the previous slide. Uh, that is the Z-Wave engine itself, the home automation uh, engine, and various user interfaces. Uh, in that case, you can focus on the user uh, application customization and uh, integration to your cloud. So you don't need to do any home automation. You don't need to make the app. You just need to customize it. Uh, another solution is to take only the backend part, that means the Z-Wave engine and the home automation. And then you can use the HTTP API to make your own user interface and um, uh, mobile application. In that case, you have much uh, more to do, but you have, uh, uh, you, you can make your own stuff and uh, design it yourself. Uh, also, you can, for example, integrate uh, the support of uh, Z-Way HTTP API to your existing application that uh, already exists and that uh, uh, support uh, some other protocols. Uh, there is another option is to use uh, the Z-Wave engine only from the backend. That means no home automation. 
And uh, in this case, you will use HTTP API to uh, control Z-Wave devices, and the rest uh, will be done in your other system uh, that will be connected through HTTP. But um, uh, still, you will use the full backend without writing uh, actually the Z-Wave server part. Uh, another option is um, uh, to use the library only. This option is good for those who has uh, who has their own uh, server side engine and who want to connect the Z-Wave engine only. In that case, you incorporate the Z-Wave library in your solution and you do everything on the C level. In that case, you need to make your own server, do your own home automation engine, your own cloud, and your own user interface. So what are the available APIs uh, in Z-Way? First of all, uh, there is a home automation API. This is the API that is uh, used for example, interface, it's a pretty high-level API. Additionally, additionally, you have a Z-Wave API. Z-Wave API is everything about uh, the Z-Wave part of the server. And uh, this is the API that is used by the expert UI. Then you can also use a JavaScript API. This is an API that is basically used to write your own applications and your own home automation. And uh, here you can have full access to all the JavaScript additional add-ons, additional modules that we provide. Uh, you can do some HTTP requests, you can do cryptography stuff, you can do uh, stored data, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, finally, you can make your own HTTP-based API. And uh, here you will use, again, the JavaScript language to write this API. Let's start with the very first one, with the Home Automation API. The Home Automation is API is a high-level API. Uh, it provides you several things. One is uh, the authentication. Another is the control of virtual devices, of all the devices that are presented in the uh, high-level uh, in the Home Automation API. Uh, you can also manage rooms, manage applications, and different rules. Uh, this API is accessible through HTTP REST or through JavaScript. Let's first discuss the authentication. Because Z-Way is um, a multi-user system with different roles, you can restrict uh, uh, access to different levels uh, based on uh, the user. So to use an API, you need to authenticate yourself. And here, several roles are provided. There is an admin role, which uh, grants you full access to everything. Then there is a user role. And this role is uh, uh, used to control devices. Uh, and uh, you can limit. Uh, the access for the user by rooms or by devices. This is good because um, you can, for example, have your children accessing only their rooms. You can have um, uh, some other, uh, so for example, guests accessing uh, stuff in the living room, but not in other rooms, and so on. Additionally, there are two very special roles. Uh, uh, one is local. It's pretty same as the user, 
but uh, there is no authentication if uh, the user is coming from local host from um, the same computer. This is good when you run, for example, a user interface on the same machine where you run um, the, uh, the Z-Way. You can install a user interface uh, a web browser or it could be some Android tablet and if uh, it's running on the same uh, host you will be able to see uh, everything that is accessible to this user. Uh, then you have an anonymous user. Uh, this one requires no authentication at all uh, and again it will have like a normal user to uh, different rooms and devices. Every login will create a session token, a special session ID that can be used then to access uh, the same API uh, many times without passing authentication. Uh, that token can expire, it can be made permanent to never expire, and also can be revoked at any moment without changing user credentials. For example, the user can connect through a mobile app. The same user can open the browser and access your system and can also make some HTTP requests. And uh, all those different ways will generate different tokens. So at any time, you can unlog in uh, your user, but only on a specific device. To authenticate, uh, there are several methods. Uh, one is uh, using login API, making a post request to a special URL, uh, and you pass the login and the password. As a result, you will get a session token. The token will by default expire in seven days. And uh, you can use that token to access uh, the API on behalf of the user uh, that uh, was used to log in. Additionally, you can use basic, basic authentication. It will also result in the same token that will also expire in the same, uh, at the same time. Uh, but a good thing about it is that you can use it to instantly execute uh, a comment. So it will be one comment uh, request. Uh, once you have the token, you can then use it to access the system, passing it through cookies or through HTTP headers. Um, below you see the uh, names of uh, two tokens you need to pass. One is Z-Way Session. It's a token that is uh, needed to authenticate you against the Z-Way server. And the number one ZBW uh, Session ID is the special token that is needed to uh, pass through remote access. We will discuss it a little bit later. Uh, that one is optional and is needed only if you go through remote access. If you go directly through a local network, you, you don't need it. Uh, the token can be obtained through a login session and um, it can be used uh, in a time-limited base, for example, if the token is just a simple one, or it can be used permanently until the token is re revoked by explicitly by administrator or by the user, if the token was made permanent. Uh, fourth option is to use a special HTTP header called Authentication Bearer. Um, it's a token that is formed based on the two uh, tokens discussed above. And uh, if you access the API through this method, uh, the token will automatically be marked as um, a permanent one. And um, this is the best option we suggest for uh, API integration. So get a token, login, uh, make a login to get a token, and then use that token uh, permanently in your integration. So at any moment, you will be able to revoke it, and you don't need to pass login and uh, do two steps um, authentication. And uh, the final one is to get uh, the token using OAuth instead of logging in. So this is uh, uh, served by our OAuth server. 
and uh, it generates again the permanent token that will be then used by authentication bearer method uh, and this is used for example by voice assistants where uh, the voice assistant ui is asking us if we allow them to grant access to your home and then you need to authenticate yourself and uh, improve uh, the list of devices that you want to grant to the voice assistant. All that stuff is discussed in the Z-Way manual, chapter, chapter 13. So we encourage you to uh, check this part and uh, get more information. Uh, here are a few examples how to use cookies, basic authentication and headers, uh, for example, with um, the um, curl command line. Uh, and with bold, we highlighted the username, the token, and uh, the URL. So it's pretty easy. Uh, all this is um, uh, specified in the documentation, so you can find it in the Z-Way manual. And uh, at any moment, you will be able to check this presentation to see um, uh, and uh, copy-paste everything you need. Next topic we will discuss is the concept of virtual devices. So the high-level um, API and the smart home user interface is dealing with um, so-called virtual devices. What is a virtual device? Um, it's a pretty abstract structure that uh, is described by a unique identificator, the device ID, uh, which is basically a string. Uh, by some metrics, title, values, status, icon of the device, uh, some setters and getters, functions that are called to change the value, the metric, and get the, uh, the metric. And uh, action handler, what to do with, we, when we do something with the device. Uh, virtual devices can be created only by apps in the way and an app can create one or even many uh, virtual devices so virtual device think of it like a, just a device uh, just let's say a variable that is storing its id its title its values and um, then it's uh, since it's created by some app the app is responsible to fill values and to uh, to do something on actions on the device um, here is a, um, a, a schematic of what is going on for example for, for a virtual device um, uh, that is based on some javascript uh, this on the left we see a device that consists, as mentioned above, of uh, get, getter and setter functions, the value which is stored uh, by the virtual device in metrics, and by some action handler. So, for example, if we have a device, let's say a binary switch, and we want to change its state, we do an action on, on or off, the action handler will be executed. The action handler can immediately change the value through the setter and then you can um, at any moment request it through the getter or it can instead execute some H, some javascript function or some uh, make some http request or do some something else and in that case um, instead of immediately changing the value through the setter it will just do some something else and if there is a, another event that this uh, the application is subscribed to, the application that created this module, it will decide, okay, the value should change, then it will call the setter. And the setter will change the value, and um, only from that moment the value will be um, updated. On the right, you see a real example of Z-Wave, um, uh, of a Z-Wave, engine generating virtual devices so the z-wave engine will generate a virtual device for every z-wave device for every uh, meaningful 
value presented by the Z-Wave device. So let's say we have a binary switch here. If we uh, turn it on, uh, there will be no change of the state of the device. Instead, there will be an action that will instruct the Z-Wave engine to send a comment to the Z-Wave device. And once the device will report that the value was changed, only at that moment, the Z-Wave engine will decide, OK, the value has changed and I will update the actual value of the device. And only from that moment, uh, the virtual device will update its um, value. So you see in brief how the Z-Wave engine is uh, uh, connected with the virtual device that is um, living in the home automation engine. So there is no direct connection between them. It's, uh, it's done through the... Um, there is no direct connection between the Z-Wave device and the um, virtual device. It's done through the Z-Wave module, which is generating explicitly each uh, virtual device. So that was in brief how uh, virtual devices are st structured. Here is an example of a JSON structure that is stored for each device. Uh, so here we have, um, I will just list the most important creator ID is actually the ID of the app that created this device. Device type, this, uh, there are only several device types supported by Z-Way. Uh, they are used by the user interface to render the UI. Uh, there is an ID, uh, location is actually the room and the name of this location, and then there are metrics. This device, uh, as we have seen, it's a switch binary. Uh, it has only a few metrics. One metric is um, uh, icon, another is the title. Then we have uh, is failed. It's a Z-Wave specific um, metric that stands for uh, device availability for Z-Wave, and finally the level, the level which is the, one of the most important. Uh, update time helps you to understand when the, um, the device was updated last time. So when working with home automation API, you can use HTTP requests to um, access uh, all the data. The, the first um, API request devices uh, will list you all devices in JSON form, uh, pretty like uh, it was shown on the slide before. If you add uh, uh, additionally the parameter since, and you will specify the timestamp, you will only get devices that changed uh, since the last timestamp. So this can be used for constant polling, every time you memorize you, you, the time step that came with this reply and use this timestamp to get everything that changed since that time, so since last request. Uh, if you add slash ID, you will get a structure for only one device. And um, again, it will be a JSON structure. Uh, that it can be easily parsed and used in your application or in your uh, third-party system. Then you can do some uh, operations on uh, virtual devices. For example, slash comment slash on will turn on the device. Uh, and it will reply you with an empty answer. In the same way, uh, you can do comment exact that uh, will set uh, the level to exact level and then specify some integer value to deem the lights to a specific value. We encourage you to look in the documentation in our Z-Way source code, in the source code of the home automation, which is open, and in the browser log. It's uh, the browser log, it's really cool to, uh, to get things um, and to learn, because when you open the browser log and you just click in the UI, you will see all the API functions that uh, goes from the browser to 
the Z-Way server. And this is really the easiest path to learn things with uh, Z-Way. When you want to use the same level of API in JavaScript, uh, there are several comments. So controller.devices will uh, list you all devices. It will return an object. Uh, and uh, then you can walk through this object and uh, look on all the devices that are in the system. Uh, the second uh, API call will return you only a specific device and uh, with its structure. And then you can do uh, additional perform command method you can call it with uh, different parameters to execute various actions action on action uh, exact action off etc you can also subscribe to device metric change uh, by using on function and here is specify change and then metrics level or metrics and instead of level you can change another uh, to another uh, property that you want to listen for and then the function is a JavaScript callback function that can uh, that will handle uh, this um, event uh, of course you need to use off to unsubscribe this is pretty um, common in uh, JavaScript so that was all about uh, in brief about the uh, Home Automation API, and now let's walk through the Z-Wave API. So here, uh, first of all, we need to note that it's a pretty low-level API, and uh, it gives you access to everything about the Z-Wave uh, implementation in Z-Wave. Control devices. Configure devices. Uh, you can also manage the Z-Wave network and um, everything in the expert UI is using this API level. So if you want to investigate in details this uh, uh, API, go in expert UI, click on various buttons and you will see what is going on. Here you have again HTTP REST API, which is by default accessible to admin only. Uh, you also have JavaScript API, and you also have C API, which is not part of this webinar, but it's very sim similar to JavaScript API. Uh, before you start using this API level, uh, note that if you don't use Home Automation API at all, and you don't use the Home Automation, uh, the Smart Home UI, uh, in that case, we suggest you to disable the creation of virtual devices uh, to speed up the way because it will not uh, need to handle all the higher level handlers and uh, will not need to run that code. Additionally, you can make the Z-Wave API public without any authentication, that is to make it accessible to an anonymous user. Uh, this is good if you trust your network and you want to execute uh, Z-Wave API commands directly from another system and you don't want any authentication. Uh, this can be done in the uh, Z-Wave binding app. Uh, and here is a screenshot. Uh, so enable API is by default to allow it. You can disable it and it will be turned off completely. By default, it's checked. Uh, allow public public API access. Uh, this is by default off, but you can enable it. Uh, and uh, you, by default, uh, Z-Wave will create virtual devices for Z-Wave devices. You can also uncheck it and use the Z-Wave API only. We encourage you to use Z-Wave API only if you really need a pretty deep access to Z-Wave characteristics. If you need to uh, configure devices from your third-party system and uh, run very specific Z-Wave commands, if you just want to control devices, turn them on, off, uh, we suggest you to use Home Automation API. If you want to access this API through the HTTP, 
you have two types of comments. One type is the wave API slash data and another one slash run. Slash data is used to get actual data tree of um, uh, the current state of the network. So here you will really get everything about the Z-Wave uh, ch changes in Z-Wave network in one single tree. So if instead of timestamp you specify zero, you will get the full tree that is give me all changes since the beginning of the world. And if you use uh, a specific timestamp, then you will get only the difference between the previous state and the current state. And this is cool to get uh, updates in uh, your system by polling, but uh, not the, without parsing the full tree, you will only get difference. And um, of course, using this request, you can get a very specific value of a specific sensor. So instead of getting the full tree, you can only pick up values one by one. Uh, and this is done by uh, the way devices ID, uh, then command class name, data, property name, here it's level, uh, dot value. In the same way, you can turn on off devices and you can, uh, so here you use switch binary command class, command set, and value true and false to turn on and off correspondingly. In the very same way, you can use uh, switch multi-level with a specific uh, value. So again, go in documentation, check up our source code, or check up the browser log uh, in Expert UI to learn more. Uh, the API accessible from JavaScript is exactly the same as uh, the one accessible through the run command on HTTP. So everything you pass to HTTP request Z-Wave API slash run will end up in JavaScript engine and will be executed uh, like a simple JavaScript code. So from the JavaScript, uh, again, you use Z-Wave.devices, you specify the device ID, instances, those are Z-Wave channels. Again, you specify the instance ID, then the command class ID, data, feature, and uh, dot value. If you don't specify dot value, you will get uh, information about not only the value, but also update time and the type of the value. Uh, if you want to subscribe to a value change, instead of doing dot value, you do dot bind and you specify a callback that will be executed when the value changes. To unsubscribe, you can use dot unbind and specify the same function. Uh, so the, this API is pretty flexible. And for example, if you refer to um, channel zero, so-called channel zero, that means outside of channel, you can just omit it, which is pretty cool, uh, because you don't need to write uh, uh, stuff you don't need. Uh, additionally, instead of command class ID, you can just write the name of that command class. So this is what we used here. So writing sensor binary is same as writing here command classes, and here specify uh, 25 in hexadecimal or 37 in decimal. Pretty same here and here. And of course, we have omitted the instance, instance zero, uh, like stated here because uh, if we deal with a single channel device uh, without uh, any multi-channel features we don't use to specific we don't need to specify it but if it would be um, uh, a double channel for example device double relay you will have to specify devices id of device uh, and then instances and id of the instance The next level is the JavaScript API. So as uh, you have already seen, most of the stuff you run in um, using uh, the Z-Wave API ends up in uh, JavaScript API anyway. But additionally to the Z-Wave um, uh, objects in JavaScript API, you 
have the full access to all the JavaScript stuff. You can uh, use additional modules like sockets, web sockets, HTTP requests. You can also use cryptography functions, file system, uh, uh, load and save functions, shell commands, and XML parsers, and additionally, timers, the classical set timeout and set interval in JavaScript. Uh, that API is also accessible through HTTP REST, uh, also for only for admin and, um, of course, uh, in the JavaScript engine. So here it's very simple, slash gs slash run, and then you write any code you want. Uh, a nice thing about Z-Way is that you can really uh, execute stuff right from the browser address bar. So you can write your code in the address bar, you tap enter, and the code is sent to the server and immediately executed in the internal JavaScript engine. So your JavaScript code, um, it can use all the additional modules. It can use all, uh, the standard JavaScript syntax uh, and um, everything that is part of the standard. And uh, it can also deal with uh, home automation objects like virtual devices, rooms, uh, rules, etc. Here are a few examples of um, JavaScript API, so classical set timeout, uh, where you specify the function in the timeout. Uh, and that will set a timer to timeout and execute the, func the function mentioned in the first parameter once the timeout is reached. Uh, pretty same you have for set interval. Uh, for HTTP, you have HTTP.request where you specify the URL and uh, success function and uh, uh, error function to trap problems. Um, fs.load, file system.load.json will uh, load a file in the um, Z-Way folder, any JSON file. Uh, additionally, there is a special local storage in Z-Way that is uh, able to, to save JSON objects. And uh, here you use load object and save object to um, save and load those uh, files. So all that was about uh, writing own stuff. But uh, before you do it, let's look first on the automation and advanced automation and scripting in Z-Way. Maybe you don't need to write that code to make your, uh, to accomplish your task. In most cases, you can just use existing apps. And here we will uh, walk through only a few of them to show you the idea uh, behind all that stuff and maybe encourage you not to, you, not to write your own code, but in uh, uh, cases where you can use existing modules. So let's begin with the HTTP device app. So that app is uh, as stated uh, uh, in the name, is creating a device that is binded with HTTP uh, to a HTTP uh, request. Here is a configuration of this app, and uh, here you can select the device type. It can be a switch, a dimmer, a sensor. Then you can specify uh, various icons from a list. And the most important, you will specify the URL uh, that will be used to get the value. Uh, for a sensor, for example, here we're setting up only a sensor. You can only specify where to get the value for the sensor. If it would be, for example, a switch or a dimmer, you can also specify what to do when the button is pressed, the button on is pressed, the button off is pressed, and uh, also what to do for a dimmer if a specific value is sent to the device. So the device will, uh, this HTTP device, when you uh, click on it uh, to set a value uh, for a dimmer or a switch, it will make an HTTP request and do something on the third party system. So with this, you can uh, really uh, get value from a third party system for HTTP and push uh, actions with that device to the same system through HTTP. We can even do it on different in different um, 
URLs, for example, you get value from one uh, URL and you push it to absolutely another URL. Uh, when you get um, data, uh, the way will automatically detect that uh, the answer is a JSON or is an XML. And here you can also write a custom parser for your result. So if, if it's a string, JSON, or XML, you just write a simple JavaScript code here, and there is a small example uh, how to do it. That will allow you to really make fancy stuff like uh, get values, for example, from Internet Weather Informer uh, that is used uh, in your region, parse it, and show a temperature sensor here. Uh, then you also have the polling interval. And you can then also specify sensor scales and um, HTTP methods get or post, and um, authentic basic authentication if it's needed. So if you don't, you just skip it. Uh, that allows you to create very basic stuff, uh, and uh, in most cases, that app is enough to integrate two systems, the way and something else that has an HTTP API. Another pretty interesting app is called Dummy Device. As stated in the name, it creates a device. Um, just creates a device. And why it's called dummy? Because the device is essentially doing nothing. When you turn it you when you press on um, on the buttons here to turn it on or off, or when you set the value depending on the type of the device. Here we show switch binary and uh, multi-level switch. Uh, the device will immediately accept the value and will do no action at all. So the only action it does is accepting the value and changing the, uh, the value stored in this device. Uh, we use it in two ways. One is like a variable. For example, a variable that is uh, um, storing for example, away mode. You can make a device, dummy device, called away mode, and if it's turned on, it will be in count, it, uh, it, it will be counted in uh, different logics that if this device is turned on, do something, and if it's turned off, do something else. Uh, so it's like a binary global variable, nothing else. Uh, pretty same for the dimmer. Additionally, you can use it like a trigger. For example, if uh, this device is uh, turned on, you can start executing some rules and scenes. So it will be just a trigger. Next one, a pretty complex one, and we discussed it very briefly in the first webinar, is logical rules. Logical rules is um, a module that gives you if then uh, configuration of a rule. Rule: If something happens, check conditions and execute something, um, some action. A cool thing about it is that it uses Boolean logic. That is, you can uh, specify and or and or or uh, comparison, and you can also do so-called nested conditions, that means parentheses, in which you can specify if this and something or something else happened, then do something. So it provides you pretty complex rules, uh, pretty complex conditions. And here you can, of course, use not only uh, virtual devices that are uh, created based on Z-Wave app, but also based on HTTP device uh, app and dummy device app. And here, it, uh, you can really bind, for example, if something uh, happened in your Z-Wave network, then send something to HTTP, uh, through HTTP request uh, using the HTTP device. So there are three parts in this module. Uh, the event, so what is triggering this um, uh, rule. 
Usually it's a device change or a scene execution. Then you have a condition which will be checked. The condition is uh, accounting for device status, the current state of uh, existing virtual devices, and uh, for example, the time. Here you can use some Boolean logic, uh, use if, uh, uh, this and that, or something else. And finally, you have actions. Action uh, can be just uh, a device command or several commands executed. So this gives you pretty complex uh, home automation um, features and you can design your own logic using this module. But sometimes you really want to write JavaScript code and uh, you believe it's faster. And for that, we have um, in Z-Way a so-called easy scripting module. Again, as stated in the name, it provides you an easy way to write JavaScript code. Uh, of course, you can write your code and put it on the server and execute. But before you go that deep, try this module. Maybe it helps you to make everything you need in a few minutes. So few important features here. There is a visual code helper that uh, has a syntax highlighting. Uh, and uh, code helper to select devices, to select their properties, and uh, to select actions on those devices. It helps you to write the code by just clicking uh, and selecting uh, from a list, which makes it really pretty easy. Uh, and of course, it supports ECMO 5 JavaScript, so it gives you huge possibilities, the full possibilities of the JavaScript engine. The only thing that looks not like a JavaScript here is the header, which is uh, violating JavaScript syntax. Uh, this is the special notation used in this module to specify when to check uh, when to execute the code below. The code below will be executed when uh, values, metrics changes for this, this virtual device. So if that virtual device uh, has new values updated in its metrics, that code will be executed. So it's like a trigger what to do and then the condition, uh, when to run the code. And then the condition and actions can be specified here in um, in JavaScript code. And uh, the example here is uh, uh, if the motion is detected and the time is uh, before 9 a.m., turn the light on to 20% and otherwise go to 100%. Pretty simple automation that can be also done in using logical rules, but you need to click quite a lot. Here it's a pretty simple code that um, uh, can be easily understood. Uh, so that module makes it pretty easy to make your own code if you really like JavaScript and you believe for you it's faster to write things than to click. Finally, if you, you're a real geek in, and you want to go deep, you can of course put your JavaScript files uh, on, on your server and uh, execute them directly from our JavaScript code. But the beautiful way to do it is to create your own app. Uh, creating your own app means that you need to create a pretty special structure of your code, and then it will be distributable, distributable uh, through the Z-Way application store. The App Store, uh, here is a screenshot from our admin panel where you have different uh, modules uploaded. And uh, as you see, there are quite a lot of uh, different modules in our App Store. Some are written by us, some are written by uh, various uh, people that are, are our uh, community users. and. Uh, if you write your own module, what are the benefits of doing it? Uh, first, uh, 
a module. Uh, of course, any JavaScript code can create a virtual device, but um, if you look in our modules, you can see how to do it in a beautiful way, where when your app is executed, when it's launched, uh, the virtual device will be created. When you stop it, the virtual device will automatically uh, disappear. Uh, so if you make your code as an application, it will be better structured and um, will support will be supported by Z-Way in a better way because you can manage that um, application easily. You can create several applications uh, of the same type with different parameters, again, pretty easily, and you will not need to change the code to do that. You will just need to change the, the parameters of your module in the user interface. So, um, with um, your own app, you have the full freedom of uh, writing your own logic in JavaScript. With additionally, if your application requires some input parameters, for example, uh, on the next slide we will discuss uh, an application which is called automatic off, which is turning off automatically the light. Uh, of course, you want to specify two parameters. One is which device to turn off, and uh, second is uh, after what uh, interval to turn it off. Uh, if you want to run this app a few times for different devices, you want to specify different devices and different intervals. And um, uh, the app structure allows you to make your own visual configurator for each application and each instance of that application will have has its own uh, configuration uh, finally you can use uh, developers.zwave.me to upload your app and uh, uh, any user will be able to download this app from the store if you have submitted it for approval. If you don't submit it for approval uh, and uh, you have specified some special uh, tester token, uh, the app will remain hidden until you uh, submit it for verification. And there are users who don't want to publish the app to everybody, but uh, they put it in the developer store just to be able to install it through using their own tester token uh, on their various um, uh, installations. For example, you have made some module, you really don't want to make it public, but you want to use it on different systems. Instead of copying files um, on the system, you can just upload it to our website and uh, use that token to then download them by a simple click. Uh, additionally, it allows you to make uh, uh, updates of that module, so it's uh, really pretty comfortable to, for uh, distribution. So writing your own app is always about writing JavaScript code. I will walk through this out-of module, so we have taken the out-of module uh, from the distribution and um, uh, removed some small part of it just to make the code smaller, still keeping the important things. Uh, and all applications are structured in the very same way. So there are a few things, few important things to uh, take uh, into consideration. All modules starts with the description of uh, with the creation of ob an object through function in JavaScript, you can create an object. Here it's out of. It coincides with the name of uh, the module. Uh, then there is a special line to call the upper constructor. Just skip it. It's a mandatory line that you just need to do to to write. And here you can define your own variables. So in this example, we have a timer variable, uh, which is initialized with and null. Then there are two additional lines that are also mandatory for the module to work. 
uh, you cannot skip them otherwise the module would, will just not start again out of if you make your own module is substituted by something else uh, finally there are two mandatory functions that you need to uh, list and define it's a prototype init initializer and stop init will be called when you start the the application uh, stop will call it when you stop the application uh, keep in mind that init can be called many times if you have added your application two times three times etc uh, in our example of automatically turning off devices you can add this app two times to turn off two different lights uh, with two different uh, turning off period inter the interval uh so in it will be called each time um, for both of uh, those each time the system will boot and stop will be called when the system stops or when you explicitly stop uh one of those applications um let's go through in it again a mandatory line uh which is calling a constr um, upper constructor and then this is your code here we just specify a function which we called handler and this function will be passed then to uh, subscription so when devices when any device changes so we have not specified here a specific device but just generic devices dot on that means on any device change um, but here we sp still specify the device ID. So this subscription will subscribe to changes of this device. It's changes of metrics and level inside metrics. And once this happens, uh, execute the handler. So the handler is just a function that is reading the current value, checking it if it's on, or it's uh, an integer value which is greater than zero that means again it's on for dimmer in that case clear previous timer set a new timer and uh, for uh, you see for the timeout coming from the configuration and uh, once the timer will fire this function will be executed the device will be turned off and the timer will be uh, the, the variable storing the timer ID will be um, uh, cleared. And if the device is turned off, so we see the else coming from this if, in that case, just clear the timer, not to do useless work. So that was the initialization function. So the only thing we do here is we subscribe to device changes and um, put that handler as a uh, handler for changes when we stop the module again this is a mandatory line and then we just check if the timer uh, is um, active just clear it and then unsubscribe from device changes so hope that this sounds pretty easy and um, makes it uh, pretty simple to make your own modules so of course in the uh, usually in stop you do uh, you dis do destructor um, for example you remove timers you unsubscribe from uh, different um, variables and you uh destroy virtual devices that you have created in the init function you set up subscriptions you uh, create virtual devices here there is no virtual devices created and um, uh, then the code can be either written here or you can place it outside and make additional prototypes for example out of prototype dot handler it uh, we could make it in that way instead of writing it here uh, that is also possible so that's um, 
pretty all about device creation, uh, but still we need to specify the user interface for, uh, to configure the device. So here, as we have seen, we need two things. Thing number one is uh, the device ID of uh, the device we want to turn off automatically. And second one we used here is uh, config.timeout. That means the timeout parameter. Uh, it should be also configurable. For this, uh, um, it's pretty small, but again, open the um, auto off module and look at it. We have removed most of the stuff here. So this is a so-called schema uh, for the user interface. And here we specify that we need uh, two values, device and timeout. Device will be uh, taken from a list of switch binary devices. Uh, and comma and switch multi-level devices and additionally door locks uh, and uh, if uh, and this part I'm sorry missed this and timeout timeout will be a number and both of them are required to save configuration for this module so you cannot save configuration until uh, you specify uh, both of them and second part is about uh, how it will look like. So we specify here that this will be, that there will be a label device, and uh, this will be uh, a list with uh, options taken from here. Uh, we will save in the module the ID, but for the user we will show the device name. Uh, Additionally, here it's a number. We already discussed this uh, in the schema. We specified this. So in the uh, UI part, we just need to mention that it will uh, it should have a label timeout. Uh, so this will generate two fields: one a drop box with a list of device names, and another one is just an input box with integer value uh, for the timeout. So this is pretty all about device creation. Then you just upload it uh, to the uh, developer.zitwave.me, and then you can use it. Uh, of course, you can test uh, your app locally by storing it in user modules folder. Uh, keep in mind that you need to reload the way to read again your application. The final topic uh, I want to discuss today is uh, the remote access. Remote access infrastructure allows you to uh, access your Z-Way from any point, uh, from any location in the world. And uh, it's important to understand how to use it in combination with Z-Way. The remote access uh, service is served by Find Zidwave Me servers. There are several of them. And a uh, few things you need to keep in mind. First, it's fully transparent for web, uh, mobile apps, and HTTP requests. That means any HTTP request that will go to Find Zidwave Me will end up on the uh, will end up with uh, on on your controller pretty like if it would be just a local connection. Very important to notice that uh, the Find It With Me servers do not store your login and passwords. Uh, the authentication is made uh, through your Z-Way server. That means your Z-Way will decide if it should allow the box to enter or not. Additionally, no data is stored on the server. So everything you see um, provided by uh, uh, remote access service, everything is taken from your box. No value are taken from our servers because we just don't store any data. 
the system is made uh, based on SSH tunnels and uh, it passes easily the, the NAT, network address translation, so you can uh, have any provider without real IP, without port forwarding at all, and that system will still work. And finally, this service is not part of Z-Way server itself. It's provided by a, an additional service that is installed on your system called ZBW. Uh, it's a service that is keeping constant connections to one of our SS, uh, one of our server. The connection is just an SSH tunnel. So if you see uh, on the picture below, you see that the, the server, there are many of them. The controller is connecting to the server, setting up an SSH tunnel. And then if the customer, uh, the client is willing to connect to uh, its box, it will send a request to find it with me and find it with me will use either the token or credentials to understand to which box it should send the request and it will send an authentication request to uh, the controller and if the controller will approve it uh, the data will go through that tunnel let's see a few examples how to do uh, authentication for finds it with me so you see that um, compared to the slide that we have um, in the beginning of this presentation where we used local IP here. Here we use HTTPS uh, to find it with me. And one example is how to getting login and pass, uh, uh, getting on the server for login and uh, password. Additionally to the username, you specify here the box ID. Uh, so the ID of your uh, box. The data will be stored in cookies and then used uh, for the next uh, request. In the very same way like it was shown um, in the beginning of this presentation, we can also use existing tokens to pass through. So th those two examples are absolutely identical to um, those discussed uh, in the beginning for local access except for that the local IP is changed by finds it with me uh, server. And uh, look on the previous slide, the data from the, the client to the finds it with me server will be always encrypted uh, using HTTPS, that means SSL and TLS encryption. And uh, the traffic from finds it with me to uh, the controller will use HTTP because uh, there is no uh, HTTPS for local network uh, because of domain names. And But uh, the traffic will be still encrypted by the SSH tunnel and this tunnel is also using SSL and TLS. So everything will be encrypted. So that's, I think, all you need to know about the Z-Way API to be able to use it in your uh, integrations. And uh, now we will have a Q&A session and I will answer your questions. Um, so let's go with um, uh, questions. If you want to ask a question, please go to uh, please press on the question mark icon and um, write your question there. So first question, uh, can we demonstrate um, uh, how to use dummy switch on off uh, uh, using HTTP API? Uh, It's uh, basically covered in the presentation, uh, but um, we can also 
show it if you want. Uh, in the presentation, uh, you have seen the HTTP API for uh, uh, for home automation, for uh, sorry, for smart home, um, um, and uh, let me show you where it is. Yeah, so here you can um, looking on this API, the automation API, you can. Uh, turn on off devices and the device ID here uh, will specify which particular device to turn on and off. Uh, actually, when you create a virtual device, a dummy device, you will see here, uh, you will have a unique ID for that dummy device. And um, with the uh, this command, you can control not only Z-Wave device, but of course, uh, or also a dummy device, an HTTP device, and um, of others. Uh, it's also recommended to open the browser and see how, uh, which command is sent by the browser where, when you control this dummy device. So this is the easiest way to, um, to control, uh, to, to check which API to use, which exact command to use to access your system. We can also go and um, uh, use, I can open a real system and show you in brief how to use all that, um, all that stuff. Uh, so if you have other questions, please um, ask them. Meanwhile, I will uh, open the system and um, show you in details. So do you have um, more questions? Um, so feel free to ask them. Otherwise, I will just go for a simple demonstration, and uh, then we will uh, end our webinar. Um, how can you get the um, update of device, uh, Z-Wave device changes, uh, uh, update of Z-Wave devices if they are changed, uh, if you're using the HTTP API? Um, well, uh, there are two ways to do it. Uh, way number one is to use the Z-Wave um, API. So if you're using the Z-Wave API, uh, you will have the Z-Wave API slash data and then timestamp. And with this, you will get um, the differential uh, status of uh, your full network. And then you can parse and find your particular device and um, uh, see if uh, it has changed in the new update. Another way is to pull the device itself, uh, the device value itself, so only one particular value, like here. Uh, there is another third option uh, that allows you to uh, subscribe using bint function to the value change, and then in the callback, you can do whatever you want, for example, do an HTTP request and push the value to your system. Uh, that's the third option you can use. Uh, so, um, depending on your system, you should see which is more comfortable for you. If you have uh, to monitor only for one or few values, you should probably use um, uh, polling of a uh, particular value or binding to a particular value. If you want to monitor many devices, we would certainly suggest you to uh, use the full data tree uh, polling and uh, get values uh, from there. 
Uh, how um, so course option um, is uh, preventing um, access to the device using HTTP request in JavaScript. Uh, that is true. There is a course option that uh, is preventing it in most uh, modern browsers, but um, the way replies with um, um, a low course header that should instruct the uh, should instruct the browser to allow this um, uh, this call this HTTP request and uh, in most browsers there is no problem with this sometimes there uh, if your browser is um, um, restricting more than usually you need to go in your browser preference and remove the um, uh, remove those additional checks but uh, by default all the browsers do allow this uh, if um, uh, because uh, the way uses that special header. Uh, what about using the way in combination with, uh, for example, Node-RED uh, and uh, MQTT protocol? Uh, MQTT is um, uh, is a protocol that uses uh, sockets or HTTP requests to um, uh, transfer updates. Uh, uh, from the system to the MQTT broker. And uh, there are two modules, or even three modules, written by a um, uh, community that, that implements MQTT uh, in the way. Uh, one uh, is used to push data from the way to MQTT broker, and another one is used to subscribe to uh, MQTT values to get data from the broker. Uh, and uh, using this, you can integrate uh, the way with uh, some broker and uh, have uh, both uh, directions of um, updates. So based on the broker, uh, subscri subscriptions to, um, on the broker, you can update values of existing devices and uh, by pushing your uh, the, the data to MQTT broker, you can push uh, values from Z-Wave devices into MQTT. Um, we have a plan to unify this a little bit because the community um, uh, written uh, modules are uh, not implementing few new features of MQTT, so uh, we have a plan to revise that and to um, uh, release uh, a more sophisticated MQTT application for both subscription and uh, pushing values. Okay, so let's uh, search for... Um, yeah, going back to subscription of um, Z-Wave uh, device change, um, the polling is the simple option uh, with HTTP. Another option is to let the Z-Way server using this bind function to subscribe to value change. So that will not be polling because it will be executed in the JavaScript engine uh, on the server side. And when the value will change, a callback will be executed and this callback can uh, send the value into uh, your system. So if your system is able to uh, receive data through HTTP, in that case uh, you can receive data um, in your system uh, without doing polling. Uh, how the event history works in uh, Z-Way? Yeah, that's a good question. It was not covered here. In Z-Way, there is, um, uh, in the Z-Way home automation engine, besides virtual devices, apps, and rules, locations, there is also uh, there are also notifications. There is a special command uh, uh, called controller.addNotification uh, that will create a notification uh, and in the um, notification list. 
And uh, then there are different uh, modules that can subscribe to notifications and then analyze them, checking what is the notification severity, what is uh, the module, the, uh, the subsystem, not the module, but subsystem uh, that fired this notification. And based on this, uh, they can for forward the notification to uh, the mobile app through pushes, uh, or send it through SMS or send it uh, by email. We are currently reworking uh, slightly this part and um, I think we will release it uh, uh, soon with completely updated um, structure and uh, it will already work with the new mobile app that we have released for Android and will also work with uh, the mobile app that is uh, almost released for uh, iOS, for Apple. If you want to send um, uh, an, an EDP request, um, an EDP packet instantly from another, uh, to another system, uh, for example, on motion detection or some other event. Again, you can use the same bint function to track the event if you want to use Z-Wave API, if you want to use um, uh, higher level home automation API. In that case, check, for example, uh, the easy scripting module that allows you to uh, execute some JavaScript code when device uh, status changes. So if motion uh, uh, motion sensor status changes, there will be an, a JavaScript executed, and this JavaScript will have to use uh, uh, socket uh, UDP request. So go in uh, Zway manual and search for UDP. You will find uh, full description of uh, uh, UDP API, TCP and UDP API. API. And of course, you can uh, check the Sonos app code, but the, the app is really huge, but you can still um, check it to see how it works. Uh, next question. When you install Z-Way, it tells you that your user ID and your password for Find Z Wave Me uh, are set and uh, shows them. And the password is indeed uh, stored in etc zbw, uh, etc slash zbw slash password. Um, this password is not used anymore, so um, this comes from old uh, ages when uh, there, when um, this password was the only protecting your system, and at that moment it was stored on our server, of course, because we had to check it. Uh, and every time you connect uh, the password from this file was sent to our system. Uh, but currently this subsystem is not used anymore. Uh, so all the authentication is made through authenticating against Z-Way. Uh, so our Find it with me server, uh, when it receives credentials, um, it will send them uh, to the box um, specified in the uh, username. Uh, and uh, if Z-Way will accept it, it will allow the connection to go through. If not, it will not allow. So this password is not used anymore and uh, you can just forget it and um, skip it. Uh, can you be sure that uh, the device ID always stays same? And even if you delete the device, um, um, for example, with the lower ID, uh, there are two device IDs specified in uh, Z-Way, so don't mix them. First one is the device ID, which is here. It's a Z-Wave ID, and Z-Wave um, uh, is... Uh, uh, listing devices um, one by one. So when you delete some device, it will uh, that ID will not be reused until 
there are no available IDs anymore. So, uh, there, as you know, there are 232 uh, IDs available. And uh, if you, for example, have one device, device ID 2, device ID 1 is the controller, device ID 2, if you exclude it, you include it again, it will be number 3. Then again, you exclude, include, it will be number four, and so on. And only once it will be 232, if you exclude and include it again, it will become number two once again. Um, so those IDs are reused only if there are no other possibilities to uh, uh, go upper. And uh, the only way to go again to, no to number two uh, because number one is always used by the controller, is either to exclude include so many times or do a backup and restore. When you do the full restore of network topology, you reset that available counter so it will use um, IDs from uh, the lowest possible again. Uh, on the other side, there are, there is the virtual device ID. And the virtual device ID is a string. And um, the, uh, the ID is specified by the module that is creating this particular virtual device. Uh, there is um, a consensus in Z-Way that all the applications are creating uh, IDs based on their, their name, their instance ID, and then they add something else. That uh, makes it unique, and additionally, that makes it um, always same, even if you unload and load the module back. Of course, if you delete the module and load it and add it again, the new module ID will be used, the new application ID will be used, uh, and in that case, the, the ID will change. But if you just pause it, I'll stop it, and then you resume it, the ID will not change, so it's always the same. So let's probably go to uh, a, a, an example. I will share this the screen and um, show you a little bit how to do uh, some API tweaking. So let's go um, in my share screen. So this is my system I have just accessed um, from Finds It With Me. Uh, and uh, let's see, for example, this switch it's a light uh, if we uh, I have opened the browser console to see that there is slash the automation slash API slash v1 uh, devices and here we see the timestamp so this is constant polling every two seconds to get or even one second to get um, updates if we look in each of them we see uh, there are no updates here. Devices, uh, updated devices array is empty. Uh, but additionally, we see the timestamp. And this is the timestamp that uh, will be next to use uh, in the use the same uh, the same timestamp. Um, that was easy, so let's now press uh, turn on some light. So we have seen the comment uh, that went through, uh, but before we uh, check that particular comment, let's see that the next update that came um, from the server now contains the uh, uh, list of devices, and there is one device that changed. Uh, and the full device structure is listed here. Let's see on the packet that was sent uh, 
to the system. So you see that it's finds it with me slash automation API v1 devices, the ID of the device, comment on. So by clicking here, you can easily check what API was sent. So this was, for example, close the door. So the door, uh, the door lock was closed. And uh, then the next uh, update that was received, so we, uh, we issued a close, the next contained nothing. But, but the one uh, next to this, to that one, now reported that the lock was closed. Perfect. 